Community fans. Now, welcome to the studio. On this video, I'm going to be doing two paintings, both watercolours, both of the same scene. Um, it's an invented scene. It's based upon a place I know in Topsham, but um, I've used all kinds of reference and manipulated the reference to suit myself. So the first painting will be a kind of backlit um, warm evening scene and I've called it smoke on the water because there's um, smoky atmosphere of barbecues or outboard motor smoke um, going out across the water. Uh, the second scene, the second painting continues that theme um, but it's more of a blue sky painting and there are more figures in it and um, it's great to do two versions of the same painting. You can experiment to your heart's content really and uh, play with the paint. It's basically practice, the essence of practice. When you've done it once you've ironed out some of the problems and you can let rip and have a go, um, which is what I've done. So the following video starts with the sun scene and then continues to the blue sky scene and at the very end I'll show both of the paintings together so you can see the difference and uh, I hope you enjoy the video please like and subscribe to my channel and um, hopefully you'll see other videos as we go. So I've laid out the composition using a watercolour pencil which is soluble and will disappear as the um, water is applied and I'm working wet in wet so the whole page has been wet first with the initial wash of yellow and uh, whilst that's wet I've added um, various other colours as you can see working down to darker foreground colours uh, over the drawing and now I'm just tilting the board to spread out some of the paint so that it uh, will dry more evenly. Um, the paper's stretched already um, and it's not a particularly heavy I think it's about 200 gram um, sheet so um, it's cockled a little bit with the wetness um, so to avoid pigment gathering in the troughs or created by the cockling I'm tilting the board to move it around um, so then I use the hairdryer and uh, once the sheet is dry I'm going in with some of the darks to draw out the boats and the basic forms of shapes on the water and reflection um, just building up the little jetty and then lightly brushing in some of the figures on the key uh, getting some of the ripples in there and uh, using a variety of round um, synthetic brushes um, to draw and define delineate some of the features and there goes the, the, the next boat which has got a bit of a red sail on it and a couple more figures there so just working away to establish the composition and then some of the more distant boats put in very pale in the background um, this is basically a backlit sun in your face scene and um, as I build up the darks um, I try to develop it working upside down as well to draw in the masts and then putting a hazy wash of, of yellow over the lot. So we've just taken a moment to let things dry, uh, deciding what's going to be next and um, working a bit on the foreground. I'm starting to introduce a little bit of white watercolour then some blues for the body of the boat in a more abstract way, running and dripping forward and becoming soft focus in that foreground because uh, in a minute they're all going to be covered in smoke so as you can see the smoke is going on with uh, white watercolour and uh, rubbing it a bit with my finger just to create some of that atmosphere which I really was intending to get. The rigger for some of the rigging is a great brush to use um, for fine drawing you've just got to be bold with your marks and flicking the paint very quickly and spontaneously um, and then putting in a few more sort of touches of white, um, just rubbing it with the finger to soften the edges a little bit. Uh, we're nearly there now, just a 
couple of spots on the water that not overdoing it hopefully just taking my time and keeping it fairly minimal it's about atmosphere it's not about too much detail there's a central focus there's atmosphere there's smoke on the water so here's the finished painting and now we'll move on to the second painting which is another version of the same idea uh, I'm I start with a slightly more involved drawing um, apply masking fluid and here we are working on some of the first washes the sky is a bit different this time I've got clouds in there um, fairly abstracted and uh, really want to exploit that wetness of the watercolor so you can see the washes are um, working wet into wet and uh, the, the background is fairly dry um, but the wetness is the wetness of the wash of paint and I'm letting paint mix on the page as I paint it. Um, all this drawing is again done with a water-soluble grey pencil crayon which will pretty much disappear. There won't be any pencil lines visible by the end. Um, the good thing about that is that I know where the drawing needs to be having done it already it's kind of a practice and having already done the painting once um, I'm fairly familiar with all the elements other than the few figures I've drawn in and the different color schemes so I can play really uh, which is partly what this is about the beauty of watercolor is that if you practice um, one of the things I've discovered if you practice um, doing the same painting two or three times you will actually hopefully be able to play more with the paint and experiment more and if you make a mistake in one you can pick that up the next time and, and correct things um, so here i'm working through the boats in the background which won't matter because they'll be painted on top of that wash and the masking fluid um, you'll see is there still there's a bit blob of it there and i'm i'm uh, dabbing away some of the excess paint as well with the dry tissue so it's all still fairly wet in wet and here we go back to the time lapse and we we'll review some of those stages and uh, take it up to the next stage um, you can see it developing as a whole now rather than looking at some of the detail there in goes the key side and the jetty and then starting to get some of the colors into the boats i'm being a bit more experimental with color and um, trying to really be fairly bold and uh, get some complementaries and some fairly bright primaries on there um, to really let things sing out and play with the color um it's got quite a lot of wet in wet blending the boat into the water surface which kind of helps it to sit into that water nicely one of the nice things about making a film is that you can see the different stages of the painting and watch it back and I think really at this stage I should have left the background much simpler than putting the boats in it's one of those marmite things you either like it or you don't but um I quite liked it having a large area to rest the eye but um, you live and learn and hindsight is a wonderful thing and um, anyway my first intention was to put the boats in in the background so I did um, so anyway on we go with the development of it and just highlighting some of the figures making a few of the uh, details a bit more outstanding again using the rigger and uh, other large um, brushes to put on the, the smoke effect continuing that smoke on the water theme and uh, developing the atmosphere I uh, scumbled a bit of white over the background a bit there as well just to soften it down because I think it was getting a little bit too fussy um, I'm using a bit of white gouache on this one rather than watercolor um, just to give it a little bit more body and um, smudging it a bit with the finger just to soften it and uh, blend it but I'm treating it fairly watery, light watercolour, um, rather than really thickly applying it. And uh, I think that creates a nice watery, smoky effect. 
and um, quite satisfying to apply to. So on go the finishing touches and that's probably enough really. Anything else that leaves us far too much. Um, a few last minute blots with the finger and uh, that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and please like and subscribe and share with your friends and um, we'll get some more ready fairly soon. Finally, here are both of the paintings in the finished state.